Hello everybody, welcome back. We are here with another fun-filled day of science and I'm very excited to be back with you again. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful winter break and you were able to spend some time with your loved ones and you were able to relax and do some fun things. I did all of those things. I got sick, hoping it's just a cold, fingers crossed. Today, we're going to jump back into learning about asking questions and being able to think like scientists. Now, you have done an amazing job as learners and you have been bouncing back and forth in, in terms of thinking like scientists and thinking about asking questions as well as going back to taking your plant part quiz and i really really appreciate that thank you for being so flexible and being willing to do that for me thank you thank you thank you today we are going to refresh our minds and talk about how before winter break Again, a, over a week and a half before winter break, we focused on how scientists spoke about um, finding information and then providing reasoning for their information, right? You can't just find information for something. You can't do scientific research and then say, it is the way it is because I say so, right? That's not how science works. Now, here in my workspace, I have a lot of things around me, so I might at any given time just grab things, okay? I happen to have medicine for my headaches, and I happen to have some more in, um, medicine that I'm taking because my sister is sick right now, so this is it's kind of preventative to keep me healthy, okay? So my medicine for my headaches. A doctor didn't come up and say, hey, this medication helps with headaches because I say it does. Now that's not a thing that happens, right? A, do a scientist can't just come up and say that. They would have to prove why a medicine helps with headaches right? They would have to say, this person took this medication and over time they told me that they had fewer and fewer headaches, right? I also happen to have lotion right here. Someone didn't just say, hey, here, use this. It makes your hands softer because I say so someone put different ingredients together same with the medicine and over time they found out that hey ingredients like water and shea butter and coconut oil those things make your skin softer instead of maybe dry and cracked you should put some of this on your skin too and it will make your hands soft but they conducted research. They made a list of the things they put in these materials, whether it was medicine or lotion. They conducted studies to see what happened when it was used. And then they recorded what happened as it was being used. You can't just say, this works, you should try it. It's not how science works. It's not how science goes. You have to provide reasoning for things you see or things you do. Okay, now your questions today. Why do you think that's important? In the grand scheme of things, if we're thinking big picture, okay, hopefully you've, you've had big picture conversations. Okay, so overall, why do you think that's important? Why do you think scientists need to provide evidence? 
I'm not just saying for medicine or lotion. But why do you think for anything? This is why I say big picture for anything. Not just this little picture, big picture for anything. Why do you think they need to provide evidence or proof of the things they find? Why do you think they need to do that? This is what I'm asking you to do today. So answer the, those questions in your discussion post for today. Sorry, on your Seesaw page for today. You can provide that answer in written form, typed form, or in a voice message, okay? Let me know what you think. I'm very curious as to what you have to say, okay? I hope you all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.